Hello, welcome back to another edition of Lead. I'm your host, Cody Johnson, and today we're going to be taking a look at Davis Mills' film versus the Indianapolis Colts in week one. Let's get into it. All right, so first off, I'm going to say uh, the theme of this video is probably going to be some inconsistencies with Davis Mills' passing. Uh, there were some good things, and then there were some missed opportunities. Um... Big things I liked uh, in, the, in this first game were I liked his uh, reading of the field, not sticking on to one receiver, going to um, going through multiple reads to say the least. Not just you know there were some some instances where he would stick on to Cooks as you know young quarterbacks do, but being able to go through your reads like he did through a lot through this game for a young quarterback is very good. Uh, one thing in particular I didn't like was. Uh, his throwing to the outside, to the to the sideline in particular, especially on the left side, it wasn't very good in this game. And I'll give you some uh, examples of both as we're going through it. But uh, just a, just a forewarning, these plays are how they came uh, during the game. I didn't uh, change it to do bad and then good or anything like that. It's just going to be how it went through the game. Unfortunately, the, the film didn't give me the down and distance or the quarter so we're gonna uh, go through this together all right so the first play oh and also i didn't highlight every single play i picked uh, a good amount that i wanted to go over and, and that's where that's where we're at so first play i want to go over is start the end of the first drive we go three and out um i wanted to highlight what happened on this play and i think it was it was 70 percent cook's fault here so my thing was you run through this play. Cooks did a good job, as you can see right here. He's going to sit right behind the linebacker that's covering this flat route. He's going to sit. Mills already let the ball loose as he's turning back. And this ball could have been a better placement, but it's going to pop Cooks right, right in the chest, and he drops this ball. Right in the chest. You got to catch that, Cooks. Um, could have been a little bit more inside, of course, from Mills. A little bit better ball placement. Uh, may, I'll chop that down to some some early game jitters. But you, you got to catch that ball. You extend this drive. Maybe he gets going a little bit earlier, and then maybe you get more more of a lead. But uh, you can't can't have that drop. Easy pass, easy catch, and, and it just lets it go. Hits him right, in the, pops him right in the shoulder pads. And we'll see the other angle here. Pops him right there, right in the right in the right side of his shoulder pad. You gotta catch that. Gotta catch that. So the second play, similar similar thing. Now a little bit more of this was Davis's fault. It wasn't a great pass, but it was a catchable pass from uh, Conley. This is to end the second drive, our second three and out. And Conley's gonna come across the field right here, right? And he's gonna come across uh Mills feels some pressure from the right side, and he's gonna roll out. Gets that pressure, or I'm sorry, coming up the middle actually, but it's to his right. So he rolls out to his right and does this funky little jump pass. Um, I don't really care for that too much. I would prefer him to just stay platform. This isn't too hard of a throw. Just use your arm. You have a good enough arm to make this throw. Uh, I know you don't have a great for our fantastic arm, but you can make this throw. Stay with your platform. Uh, you're crossing your feet. You're jumping. Just stay with your platform and, and just to toss this ball. It's going to come in kind of low to Conley. But it's going to hit him in the hands right here. And he drops the ball. Now Mills, of course, put this a little bit higher and he's still running. Right? There's nobody no, nobody in this uh, patch of grass right here. He would have been gone. But, again, Conley, you also got to catch that ball. So uh, that was probably more 70, 30 Mills. But uh, I I'll say you got to catch that still. It hits him right in the hands, too. Oh, man. A little bit higher, again, but you got got to catch that. Now, this is the third drive. This is his first really good pass. Um, you got uh, Farrell Brown right here, tight end lined up on the right side, and he's going to run a, a little corner route. And Mills, they're going to fake run, play action. And he's just going to wait for him to break off of this linebacker. Does, uh, I'm sorry, not Brevin. Farrow does a great job getting open right here. Mills watches him, wait till he's open. Just 
slings that thing in there. Good pass. I think this is where Mill started to get more in his rhythm. Uh, you, you will go into a little bit more, but this this was the start of it. You know, you're at the you're in your own red zone, uh, at your own goal line, and you're able to make this pass. Good protection for the most part, and then you get a, a 15, 17 yard gain. So this play is a lot similar to uh, what we just saw earlier with the Conley drop pass. Um, it's gonna be play action. He's sitting in the pocket. He's reading the field. Uh, and then he starts to feel pressure from his right, so he's going to roll out. He's going to roll out. He sees his running back. He does that stupid little hop jump again, but he's able to get more mustard on this, and he gets it up into his receiver. Wish he would have let him a little bit more, but you'll take the completion because, again, there's really nobody in this patch of grass. So I think that was a learning experience. He, he made sure to put more mustard on the, on that pass and was able to, to get some yardage instead of nothing for, from it. Play action in the pocket, reading the field, goes right to left. That, Like I said earlier, he was reading the field, going through his reads really well. Pressure coming off the right side and is able to get that pass out there. Learning learning experience. That's what I like to see from a young quarterback in, in the first game. Again, he probably had jitters in this game. You saw it early on. Um, but I think he really hits his stride here uh, in the second quarter. Okay, so here he's going to be going to Cooks on the, far, on the top of your screen. Another play action pass. I like to do that a lot. Um, you got Cooks, he's going to stop right in this zone. Uh, you got Gilmore on him in his zone right here, but he's going to stop and Mills. Wish he would have thrown this ball a little bit earlier. You want him to have that anticipation where he's throwing this ball as Cooks is making his break so he doesn't have to wait as long for it and give that cornerback an opportunity to throw. Um, but he was able to deliver this pass nonetheless with a guy absolutely laying him out, as you can see right here. Uh, Better anticipation, I guess I'd say, if I, but I'm nitpicking there. He made the play, um, got the throw off with a uh, defender in his face. So that's what you like to see. Um, uh, you know, we can nitpick every little aspect of his game, but, you know, good play. Uh, <laughs> blocking assignment was a total mix-up right here. But... Um, yeah, absolutely about to get laid out and delivers this pass right to Cooks. Good good play. So I will say, in the second quarter, uh, I think he did better of it after halftime. But uh, he did rely on Cooks a little much, in my opinion. And we're about to see two plays here back to back. Um, as you can see, I already started this play, but... You got Cooks in double coverage here. I don't think this guy was supposed to be on Cooks. I think he was supposed to be guarding this flat. Um, and maybe Cooks was, or I'm sorry, maybe Mills saw that pre-snap and knew that, this, or thought this guy was gonna cover the flat, so he had a one-on-one -on -one with Cooks here. Um, but you have time to see this, obviously. So you got uh, Rex Burkhead open right here in the flat. For, you can get at least seven yards here. You gotta look at that check down and throw it. You can't trust Cooks to just make this play when it's in double coverage. Got it. You got to take the check down here. You know, and uh, it doesn't really help. Titus Howard gets blown up, and he's right at Davis's feet in this play. Um, yeah, right at his feet. But you got to take that check down wide open, which I, he already threw the ball at this point, but... He was in double covered. You, you could see that he was in double covered there. Take the check down, Davis. Just just, just take the check down. Okay, so another play here. Um, you can see him go through his read. It's going to be from Brevin uh, in, this, in this route right here, and then he's going to go immediately to Cooks. My problem with this play is he immediately goes to Cooks. Like he, It looks like he barely even looks at Cooks before he tosses the ball just... Trusting him a little too much, but he's going to be absolutely blanketed here by Stephon Gilmore, and it's not going to be really a ball that Cooks is going to make. You know, he's not that uh, possession, I guess, type of receiver, 50-50 ball type of receiver, right? So you can see here, he's looking at he's looking at Jordan, sees he's got two guys here, and then a third guy running back in the deep coverage. So he t stops and then looks at Cooks. Gilmore is right on top of this, though. Right on top of it. 
absolutely blanketed and just throws it. I mean, I, I like that. <laughs> On this play, of course, he throws with a little bit more anticipation. He's throwing while Cooks is coming out of his break, like I mentioned earlier, but Stefan Gilmore's all over it. You, you, you're not, you know, you got good blocking here. You can't can't just force that just because it's Cooks and he's the next read. You gotta go somewhere else if you can, just because that play was that play was never gonna happen. And that cut it weird. So right here. So here's the play again. Throwing it absolutely blanketed, as you can see. Okay, and then after that play, he comes back with an absolute beauty to Chris Conley. Uh, I'm sorry, not Conley. Um, oh man. Chris Moore. He throws an absolute beauty to Chris Moore. You see him lined up in the slot, and he's going to be running down the seam right here. So Moore is in his first read. You can see him looking to the left side of the field at first, and then he's going to go to Moore in his second read. Just an absolute beauty here. You see Moore's getting a step on the defender. Mills with a nice touch. You can see he's going to get it right over the defender's head. If the defender wasn't holding because this was the PI. If he wasn't holding here, uh, Moore probably catches us in stride and, and goes to the touchdown. Right teardrop over the defender's head. Uh, if Moore had both hands available, he would have caught this and probably still be would have been running into the end zone. Let me run that back one more time for y'all. Absolute dot and more obviously with only one hand couldn't couldn't reel that one in but got the PI call so good good on more there. Yeah. Holding him oh would've could have took that the other fifteen yards I believe if there was no holding here. Great great throw by Mills right there, great throw. So on the first touchdown pass here. You can see there's 12 personnel. Farrell Brown's on the bottom of your screen right here. Cook's at the very bottom. And then you got O.J. Howard at the top of your screen. Now what I really like about this play is what I was mentioning earlier is Mills going through his reads. He's going to look at Cook's first, go to Farrell. Nothing's going to be open. And then he's going to see O.J. Howard coming up over the top here. And I think what makes this play is Mills going through his reads, which draws this single high safety over to Cook's side of the field, which maybe he was going over that side of the field because it is Cook's regardless. But uh, looking that way and going through your reads and then coming back to the other side of the field always helps. Good pass. Only O.J. can catch it. That safety coming over late and uh, couldn't get the, make the play. And OJ goes in for the touchdown. Great pass. So you can you can see it right here. He's gonna go through his reads. It was great play by Mills. Left doesn't see it. OJ wide open, right in between three defenders. Great great pass by Mills. Like I said, right in that second quarter, he really got in the stride. If if he could have kept that during the whole game during the fourth and overtime, we'd probably come out and win this game. But like I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, the consistency was was the biggest thing. All right, so this play coming back with another absolute booty to Chris Moore. He's lined up in the slot here. He's going to be running, I believe it's uh, five to seven yard out. Uh, Mills is going to have pressure in his face. Uh, McCray at guard here. You need to start Kenyon Green like that's just that uh, really shouldn't be much of a debate. Um, absolutely, just gets lets. I believe this is Grover Stewart right here. Just lets him right through, and Mills is going to get drilled, but. In the face of pressure, Mills lets it go. Great pass, and it's going to be only where Moore can get it. It's going to be on his right shoulder high, so this this defender can't make a play on the ball. Great catch by Moore. Great pass by Mills. You see he's getting <laughs> double teamed right here. Um, just an absolute, absolute beauty. Uh, that's one thing Mills does have going for him. For whatever he lacks an arm, he has really good touch. Um, especially over the, the middle of the field. Seeing absolutely no blocking from McCray. Oh, yeah, Grover Stewart's going right in and, and about to level Mills. In the face pressure, he stays calm, stays has the pocket presence to just make this throw. Defenders all over more. Perfect pass, as you just saw. Perfect pass.
Now, this is the second touchdown. Um, you got O.J. Howard coming again right here. So, again, another another play where he goes through all of his reads and he's going to find O.J. Howard open. And another one where you're, you're running single high and the safety comes over and he's going to get on the side of Cooks and I, be, I can't see that number, but you're going to come over to the side of Cooks and, again, going through these reads on this side pro helps draw the safety over. So you got O.J. Howard open with – Nobody in this blade of grass and Okarike right here is just gonna sit here. I don't know exactly why. I don't know if this was his zone, but he does nothing to try and carry OJ. <coughs> so again, you can see it right here. Watch him go through his reads. His head on a swivel. Good pocket presence. Goes through both of his reads real quick. Sees OJ is open. Makes the pass. Touchdown. So, now this play, now, this play I saw people had a problem with on Twitter because obviously it's third down. You need to get to the sticks. You can see third down, the sticks are right here. You have Pharaoh Brown, who's got size on this cornerback right here that you could just toss the ball to uh, on the far side of the field and let him try to make that first play. But I think this was drawn up to go to Cooks regardless. I don't know if that was a play call. It's hard to know without knowing the play call. Or if that was just something that they saw, or that Mill saw, and he was going for in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Um, regardless, I think it was going to Mills. Or I'm sorry, I think it was going to Cooks no matter what here. That being said, you have to give your, your wide receiver a chance to make a play on the ball. And as you can see right here, his... The ball is just going to sail right out of bounds. Cooks doesn't have a chance. Skillmore doesn't have a chance either, but you want to give Cooks the chance to catch this ball. Now, this is what I was kind of talking about earlier. These plays to the sideline, especially on the left side of the field, were not good by Mills. Now, I know you have to throw across your body being a right-handed uh, quarterback, but that's something he really needs to work on, and we'll see it in the next play as well. There was just absolutely no chance that your wide receiver was making this play because you airmailed it. I don't know if he's overcompensating, or maybe for his arm, but he obviously has the arm to make the pass. Um, just gotta, you just have to give him a chance. Now I know Cooks isn't a 50-50 guy like I mentioned earlier, but give him a chance. I mean, just give him the chance. Yeah. So you see, you saw there, right? He's. He's looking at Cooks the entire way. Now, again, it's hard to know without the play call. Maybe he just locked on to Cooks and saw as a one-on-one -on -one and was going to try to give him that opportunity. Or maybe that was the play call. He'd go to Cooks if he's in one-on-one. -on -one. So either way, I, I just think this was going to Cooks regardless. He was never going to make his way back to the other side of the field to get Brevin Jordan on that play. Plus, you don't have eyes on the back of your head. So doubt you're going to see that regardless. Now, same thing here. You got Nico Collins in a one-on-one -on -one right here. And you're going to try to get him the ball to the outside. And uh, I believe he has to step up in the pocket here. Nope. Okay, so you got a pretty clean pocket. You're, I, I don't know what it was, man. I think he might have just been overcompensating and trying to make sure he got the ball over there. Um, but he airmails this over Collins, who's 6'4". That's a pretty big dude. Um, and you can see... Nico try to jump for that and just has absolutely no chance. You just got to give that those your receiver a chance there. And it's really to the sideline where it's a problem, especially the left side of the field. You can look at his uh, his stats in this game and see the left side of the, side of the field he really struggled on this game. Just got to get that down. I think you'll see you'll see it more right here. Clean pocket, clean pocket makes his way back to the left side of the field. Absolutely no chance. Conley, even jumping, just couldn't even reach this ball. I'm sorry, Conley. Nico. Now this play, I saw someone on Twitter actually kind of complaining about this play for the Texans. Thought he should have thrown more of the ball here in the slot. You're going to see he runs an over route. And, uh is going to be open at the end of the play here. But the problem is this single high safety is keyed in on Moore and if but is reading Mills' eyes, right? He does a pretty good job at it of it. If Mills had locked on to Moore, 
this single high safety was gonna run with Moore and cover this play. Uh, but as you can see, Mills, by the time Moore makes his break out to this stretch of field, Mills has already released the ball to Nico on this in route and then the safety drops. That's the only reason Moore was open here. So Mills made a good read. You can see this safety is gonna be covering Mill or Moore. You got Nico about to break on the end. He's gonna put it right between the zone where only Nico can catch it. Good pass. See, this is what I'm talking about. He's open now, so that uh, apparently he should have thrown it there. No, this safety was covering more. Uh, he just broke down as Mills already released this ball to Nico here. Good catch by Nico. Good pass by Mills, putting it in front of Nico there. We'll see it again here right over this defender great great pass again by here and then great read not trying to force that into more there good play good play so this next play here i think was a miscommunication between uh mills and and cooks uh, you're going to see he's looking at cooks cooks runs an out route here i believe mills thought he was going to run a stop and that's why he just he throws this onto the inside of Cooks right here, because Cooks is running it out, but if Cooks had stopped right here, like I believe Mills thought he was going to, this is a catch, because you got some yardage here between Cooks and Gilmore. Luckily, he threw this pretty low, because this could have been an interception here, uh, and it hits the ground, so good thing, but I believe that was a miscommunication. Could be wrong, someone correct me if I'm wrong, if you think I'm wrong, but I believe that was just a miscommunication, not, a, not an errant throw. Okay, so this is where it started going downhill for Mills. Uh, I believe this is in the fourth quarter again. You, you've got to make this pass. This receiver right here is going to be running another over route, and there is not going to be anyone covering him for a good, good little while. I don't know if he was looking past him. I believe Cooks was running a deeper route. Um, I don't know if he was staring down Cooks here. Another thing that I was saying earlier, you can see him... There's a fake. This wide receiver is wide open. This this uh, linebacker bit on the fake. You have to throw it now. There's plenty of space where he gets, you know, a 10 yard gain, 15 yard gain. But you got to throw it now, or now, or now, or now, right? Or now. Now it's too late, probably. Okay, but you still got some time, and Rex is down here open as well for the uh, check down. See, it looks like he's looking towards Cooks, but this is double coverage. He's still actually open, so you can probably make this play, but this defender, I think, believe this is Quiddy Pay, is about to come, and, and you know, uh, Farrell Brown can only hold him for so long. He's about to come and get the sack here, but either make this throw to the over route or make this check down to Burkhead because, you, as you see right here, he's clear. Everyone cleared out. He's wide open. He'll get a 7-yard gain or so. Got to make both of those passes. Let's run through it one more time. Either one of those passes, I'm sorry. Not both, but either one. N now, now, now. You got to make that pass. Make the check down. But you took the sack instead. That's just, that's not good. This is where he really struggled to end the game. Throw, throw. And, you know, like I said earlier, he has good touch. He, if I don't know if maybe he saw this linebacker and was scared at first. Um, but you... I saw you earlier, I've seen you last year, make passes where you put it right over the defender's head. This was enough space here, you could have put it over that defender's head and you didn't have that safety. You didn't have that safety, wasn't close enough to really bite on the ball that hard. So you gotta make that pass again. And you see Burkhead, everyone's starting to clear out. Burkhead's wide open as well. You gotta make one of them. But you take the sack instead, that's, that's not good. That's something that needs to be worked on. And same thing here. Now you just took the sack on the last play. You can see the first down markers at the 50-yard line. Uh, you got a long ways to go, but they're playing prevent defense. You're not going to get that pass off. So my problem here is just take the yardage to this guy. You're, you're quite obviously, you're not getting enough protection to where you can let them just run all the way down the field where you can get a Hail Mary. I don't know if you necessarily have the arm for it either. Um, just take this check down instead of taking another sack. I guess ultimately it didn't really matter because you weren't getting the first down regardless. But take this and maybe he makes a play because 
you got I mean you got another 15 yards to run here but maybe he can make a guy or two miss I think that's Nico right there but maybe truck someone but just just throw that check down that's the problem I kind of saw with this game is uh, missed opportunities like I said at the beginning just looking for the deep shot when the underneath can get you some yards and uh, you know maybe you wouldn't be in this situation like this like I'll play the last play. Three-man rush. Oh, Titus gets a uh, spin move right there. But, um, yeah, got to throw that to Nico because, as you can see, he's he's closing. Just get the ball off. Can't hold it for that long with pressure like that. Titus got to do a little bit better blocking. But Now, this is another play. Um that just kind of I wanted to emphasize on a little bit it's another play to the sideline here and he just throws it too high he gets it good enough to get uh Mills be able to I'm sorry Cooks be able to catch it but he has to jump here you get that ball down get it in his chest and he can turn and maybe he makes this defender miss and then he's got open field you know but now Cooks has to jump up and catch this ball and falls on the ground and you only get you get the first down so that's good but you maybe could have got more if you just settled down a little bit and make a better pass the sideline and he couldn't even get out of bounds that's another thing I don't know what the, uh, if this might have been overtime if the he can catch this and then even just run out of bounds and save a timeout or whatever it was right whatever situation it might be just get that ball to where Cooks doesn't have to jump for it and either get out of bounds or maybe make a play down the field. Another one here. At the end of the game, man, I think after he took that sack where he uh, lost the fumble, I think he kind of mm, got in his head, own head a little bit. And he took a few other hits, as you saw, during this during this game. If it was just a, uh, right after the throw or sack or whatever, right? I think he kind of got happy feet. You can see right here, for most of the game, or for a lot of the game at least, he was pretty poised in the pocket, not not shuffling his feet too much, anything like that. I think it got into his head towards the end of the game here. And you can see he just starts, like, I don't know what that was. You just saw that little step, step, step right there. Nico's open. Nico's open, but that way that he just stepped like that, like he hesitated. He hesitated or he saw this defender and then just started chopping his feet and he just throws this ball into the dirt. Nowhere even close, right? So, towards the end of the game, that's something I really need to see as the progression goes. Uh, when it gets into these end game situations, you're not getting in your own head, the moment's not too big for you, stuff like that. And you can make those those pretty easy throws, right? I think he, both of those last two throws were pretty easy. Uh, I don't think any throws necessarily easy in the NFL, but you know throws the NFL quarterback should be able to make, right? So you know, I think there was in this game. I think there were some good moments. Obviously, there were some bad moments. Obviously, young quarterback let him progress during the season, and and we saw in this game that he learned from some of his mistakes earlier in the game. That's what I like to see, especially in game one where you probably do have those jitters. Now I want to see more consistently the good passes than the bad ones. I think it was probably 50-50 split here. Uh, obviously, I didn't show you every single play, but there was good plays and bad plays. So, you know, he has some potential, but he just has to limit those bad plays or those simple mistakes to make reach his actual potential. So, again, not judging too much off of this game. I, it was solid, but room to grow, obviously. So, um, if y'all like this content, let me know. Give me a like. Uh, so hit the subscribe button and comment down below. I want to do the one of these after every game. Uh, comment down below who you want me to focus on next week. I'm thinking about doing Derek Stingley as he has Jerry Judy um, and Corlin Sutton up with Russell Wilson next week. But if y'all want to see someone else, let me know down in the comments. And y'all have a good day.